Today we're going to talk about morphogens. Morphogens, as you remember, are proteins that are secreted and they travel through the interstitial space uh, to nearby cells, but they don't get into the bloodstream and they don't travel long distances through the body. So, there are cells that make the secreted morphogens and there are others that receive it. So let's start at this end with a red morphogen being made by these group of cells that are way over here on this side. So look at all those red morphogens that they've successfully made. These cells have a high concentration of this red dye molecule. But as these cells secrete that to their neighbors, their neighbors are farther away than they are. So not all of the red molecules get that far away. Some of them, those red molecules, those morphogens, will bind to these cells, but some of them will just keep traveling through the interstitial space to the next group. And some will get further, and some will get further. If we compare the color of these five, this one, I can detect no red molecules in. This one, well, if you hold it up to my red shirt, or, yeah, there might be a little bit more pink in here than there is here. Here, this one I think is clearly pink. This one is, has a good amount of red in it, and this one is still completely red. That's this group of cells. Let's say that's at the anterior of an embryo. That means the head region. If the head is making the red molecule, then this might be head and then further down the body we might make neck and thorax or chest and abdomen and legs. You can see we're getting further and further away from the source of the morphogen. But what if the cells at the other end also make a morphogen? But this would be a different one. <clears throat> so we've made a blue morphogen in these cells. Just swirl it around a little, make sure we get it mixed in here. All these cells are making it. And these cells will then secrete that molecule out their cell membranes into the interstitial fluid where it will float in all directions. And as that flows, the molecule will get more and more diluted. As it diffuses away from its original point of production. With one morphogen, it was somewhat difficult to tell the difference between the two that were far away from the morphogen. Maybe even the three that were far from the morphogen. With two morphogen gradients overlapping, it is extremely obvious to tell that this one is dark blue, light blue, whitish, pink, red. Each of these groups of cell types, by receiving a lot of one morphogen, or a lot of the other, or a little of both, has determined what type of cell it's going to become. Let me give one example from your textbook. The red molecule could be bicoid. Bicoid is made in the anterior of a developing fruit fly. The blue molecule then would be nanos. Nanos is made only in the uh, posterior of a developing fruit fly. So if you have one molecule made at one end and another molecule made at the other end, it is easy to divide the embryo into groups of cells, each of which will develop into different parts of the embryo. Bicoid is 100% necessary for development of the head. Nanos is 100% necessary for development of the tail. And each of the regions of cells in between has to do with the abdomen and the thorax and the other parts of a developing insect that are all dependent on the gradients of these two molecules, bicoid and nanos. <clears throat>